Uh, so far, we have been studying the so-called convergence approach, uh, where uh, developing economies are assumed to grow into a kind of developed stage over time. Uh, however, in reality, we observe a lot of uh, poor countries remaining poor or becoming even poorer. So we need to uh, take up the uh, divergence approach. The question is why poor countries often remain poor or uh, become uh, even poorer? The classic approach to this question is uh, Nukes' uh, vicious so-called poverty, which goes as follows. Uh, in a poor country, people have a very low income, and so they have actually no savings, very little savings, which would result in a very low investment, and that will reproduce the low income situation. So this is a vicious circle reinforcing each other. It's very difficult to uh, get out of this circle. Uh, this kind of idea uh, was also expressed by a uh, Nobel laureate uh, Mildahl, who presented the idea of cumulative causation. Uh, here, uh, poor countries tend to be in the uh, vicious circle, like this, whereas the rich countries tend to be in the virtual cycle. Uh, here, uh, high income result in high savings which will produce high investment to increase the income further. So uh, there's a movement of divergence between uh, poor countries and rich countries. Now the question is how to formulate this kind of uh, divergent movement. Uh, one way of doing that is to modify the solo model we already studied. Um, which will look like that. Here is the output labor ratio. Here is the capital labor ratio. Um, in the usual analysis, we assume the production function like this, uh, assuming that the decreasing returns all the way. But in the course of economic development, it is uh, reasonable to assume that the, at least in the initial stage there will be an increasing returns and then decrease, decreasing returns will set in. So the production function will look like that. Uh, here is the uh, population growth line as we saw before. And then we see the intersection here that solves uh, steady state uh, growth equilibrium. Uh, however, uh, you see there's another intersection here between the two lines, which will give you the critical value of capital labor ratio. In the sense that the F initial value of capital labor ratio is below this critical value like, like here, then the growth rate of the capital stock is less than the growth rate of population, so that the capital labor ratio will decrease rather than increase. So economy will become poorer and poorer over time, so that's the vicious so-called range. Uh, if the initial value of capital labor ratio is above this level, then the usual approach or the usual analysis applies so that the uh, capital labor ratio increase towards this steady state equilibrium. So here is the virtual so-called area, here is the vicious so-called area. Uh, this analysis has an interesting policy implication, that is that a in, in assisting or aiding the uh, developing economy, we'd better give a lot of assistance that is called big push to change this initial condition 
uh, beyond this critical value so that the country will continue moving up. Uh, a little, little bit of assistance wouldn't help because when, when you change this one a little bit, still economy is in this you know, vicious circle range that the economy will shrink again. So big, this big push idea is quite important in considering uh, international assistance. The similar idea can be expressed in the game theoretic framework, which goes as follows. That's actually based on the uh, ideas of uh, uh, Mildow, Hirschman, and other development economists, who emphasize the uh, prisoner dilemma situation in many of the basic industries in the developing economy. Uh, in uh, basic industries such as uh, the uh, transportation, communication, and energy, and so on, we often see the bottlenecks to break to start the economic development. Now suppose there are two private firms in uh, basic industry to invest to break the uh, bottlenecks. If they invest together, firm one invests, firm to invest, their payoffs are such that they both earn a lot of money, two million dollars each, say, and to benefit the economy as a whole. Uh, if neither invests, then the bottleneck will remain so that the neither firm will get any you know, profit and society wouldn't benefit. You can assume that in this case, these two firms would invest, but not, not, that's not necessarily the case in this game you know, theoretic framework. Because firm one will choose this strategy, not to invest, over this one because if firm two, the other firm chooses to invest by itself, firm one would better wait until the bottleneck is broken by the other firm so that the firm one can free ride to get more benefit. Okay? So the three million dollars will be earned by firm one by waiting rather than two million dollars. Whereas, of course, firm two will have to spend a lot of money to break the bottleneck by itself, so that they would lose some money. Uh, even though firm two doesn't invest, firm one had better wait, uh, because if they don't invest, if firm one doesn't invest, profit is zero, but that's better than the loss by investing a lot to break bottleneck by itself. The same thing can be said about firm two decision. Firm two had better wait until firm one will invest to break the bottleneck to get the three million dollars rather than two million dollars. Even though firm one doesn't invest, firm two had better wait to get the zero profit rather than the loss, minus one, by going ahead to invest by itself. So, in either case, uh, firm one or firm two would choose to choose a strategy not to invest. If neither firm invests, they end up being in this worst solution, that is the prison dilemma. And the, so that's the uh, kind of uh, uh, vicious circle. Now, in order to change the situation, the big push is needed in this way. Suppose government subsidizes the uh, both firms' investment uh, behavior to change the uh, payoff matrix this way, uh, then firm one would choose 
this strategy invest regardless of the other form of behavior because in this case invest strategy invest will give form one uh, four or million dollars okay rather than three so that's better uh, even though firm, if firm two doesn't invest firm one would choose invest this time because this time payoff is one rather than zero okay the same thing can be said about the other firm's behavior if government changes the payoff this way firm two would choose this strategy that is to invest because uh, here uh, four is greater than three so they will go ahead to invest and the they would invest even though firm one doesn't invest because pay of one is better than zero so uh, big push uh, will help uh, uh, both firms invest together to reach this best solution and by getting out of this prisoner getting a solution um, so there are many other models to explain the uh, divergent behavior or vicious circle or prison dilemma in developing economies and the analysis is very useful to give some policy implications uh, such as uh, big push policy.